Hey there, royal watchers and drama enthusiasts. Welcome to another episode of Untold Royal Secrets. Alrighty now folks, grab your tea, crumpets, and maybe a stiff drink because your favorite royal critic is back with some piping hot royal tea that's about to make your grandma's finest china look like plastic cups from a dollar store. Today, we're diving headfirst into the latest chapter of the saga I like to call The Real Housewives of Windsor, Brothers Edition. So now Prince Harry, our favorite ginger royal turned Californian beach bum, decides it's high time to mend fences with his big bro Prince William. Now, you'd think after writing a tell book that spilled more tea than the Boston Tea Party, Harry might have realized that bridge was well and truly burned. But apparently, our boy Harry's optimism is as boundless as his ability to find new ways to embarrass the royal family. Now, before we dive deeper into this royal mess, let's take a moment to appreciate the sheer audacity of it all. Harry spent the last few years airing more dirty laundry than a gossip columnist at a laundromat. He's been throwing more shade than a forest in a solar eclipse. And now he thinks he can just waltz back into William's good graces with what? A fruit basket and an oops, my bad card. Come on, Harry, rid the room. But here's where it gets juicier than a perfectly roasted Sunday dinner. William, bless his balding head, isn't having any of it. He shut Harry down faster than you can say, makes it. It's like watching a bouncer at an exclusive club dealing with a drunk guy who swears he knows the owner. Sorry, mate. Not on the list. Move along. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm picturing William sitting in Kensington Palace, probably sipping tea, or maybe something stronger given the circumstances, and seeing Harry's name pop up on his phone. And you know what he does? He hits that decline button faster than Megan can say Netflix deal. It's the royal equivalent of leaving someone on red, and I am here for it. But wait. It gets better. Apparently, William's got a laundry list of reasons why he's not interested in playing happy families with Harry. And let me tell you, it's more extensive than the Queen's hat collection. First up, we got the trust issues. Now, I'm no relationship expert, but I'm pretty sure that when your brother writes a book exposing all your family secrets, trust goes out the window faster than Harry's chances of ever being king. It's like William's playing a game of fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, I'll ignore your calls for the next century. Then there's the matter of priorities. William's got a wife battling cancer, a bunch of kids to raise, and oh yeah, he's preparing to be the future king of England. You know, just your average day-to-day -day stuff. Meanwhile, Harry's biggest concern seems to be whether his next Netflix series will have enough dramatic pauses and meaningful stares into the distance. It's like comparing apples to, well, very dramatic, attention-seeking oranges. But here's the kicker, folks. The source close to the situation. And by close, I mean probably the guy who mows the lawn at Kensington Palace. Says that William doesn't have space for a complicated reconciliation process. Well, slap my face and call me Duchess. You mean to tell me that fixing years of public feuding, toll books, and televised interviews can't be sorted out over a quick pint? I'm shocked. I tell you, shocked. And let's not forget about Megan in all this. Our favorite former actress turned royal turned whatever she is now. The source makes it clear that William's not interested in giving Harry and Meghan more content for their next Netflix docuseries or bombshell book. It's like he's finally caught onto their game of let's turn the royal family into a reality show and decided he's not playing anymore. Good for you, Wills. Took you long enough. Now, I didn't just picture Harry back in Montecito, probably pacing around his avocado grove, trying to figure out his next move. He's probably got Meghan in one ear telling him to spill more tea and the ghost of royal protocols passed in the other telling him to zip it. It's like watching a very confused, very ginger ping pong ball bouncing between two very determined players. But here's the thing that really gets me. Harry seems genuinely surprised that his actions have consequences. It's like he thought he could trash his family on international television, write a book exposing all their secrets, and then just waltz back in like nothing happened. Sorry, Harry, but that's not how it works in the real world, or even in the very unreal world of royal drama. And let's talk about those birthday wishes for a second. King Charles, William, and Kate all wished Harry a happy 40th on social media. And Harry probably thought, Aha! Uh -huh, they still love me. Time to slide back into the royal DMs. But here's a pro tip, Harry. A social media birthday wish is the bare minimum of social niceties. It's what you do for that guy from high school you haven't spoken to in 20 years, but feel too guilty to unfriend. It's not an invitation to family Christmas. But you know what? Maybe we're all missing the point here. Maybe this is Harry's way of auditioning for a new reality show. Keeping up with the Winsles, Rejection Edition. I can see it now. Episode 1. Harry tries to call William. Episode 2. Harry tries to text William. Episode 3. 
Harry tries to send William a carrier pigeon. Riveting stuff, really. And let's not forget about the timing of all this. William's dealing with Kate's cancer diagnosis, which is a whole mountain of stress and worry on its own. And Harry thinks now is the time to try and hash out years of family drama. It's like showing up to a funeral and asking the grieving widow if she wants to hear your new stand-up routine. Read the room, Harry. But here's a wild thought. What if, and bear with me here, what if Harry just left William alone? What if he realized that sometimes the best thing you can do is give people space? What if he understood that trust, once broken, takes more than a phone call and a my bad to repair? I know, I know, it's a crazy concept, but a guy can dream, right? And let's talk about this complicated reconciliation process for a second. What exactly did Harry think was going to happen? Did he expect William to roll out the red carpet, pop some champagne, and say, Hey bro, no hard feelings about that book where you exposed all our family secrets. Water under the bridge, right? Come on, Harry. Even Disney fairy tales have more realistic endings than that. But perhaps the most baffling part of all this is Harry's apparent belief that he can have his cake and eat it too. He wants the freedom to trash his family in public, make millions off the drama, and then still be welcomed back with open arms. It's like quitting your job in a blaze of glory, telling everyone how terrible it was, and then expecting to be rehired as CEO. That's not how it works, Harry. Not in the real world, and not even in the very surreal world of royal drama. And let's not forget about the impact this must be having on the rest of the royal family. Can you imagine the awkward conversations at the palace? So, did anyone else get a call from Harry today? No? Just me? All right then, pass the tea. It's like they're all playing a very high-stakes game of ignore the elephant in the room, except the elephant is ginger and won't stop calling. But you know what? Maybe we should thank Harry. In a world that often feels like it's falling apart, he's providing us with some much-needed entertainment. It's like watching a real-life soap opera, complete with dramatic exits, shocking revelations, and more reconciliation attempts than a daytime TV marathon. Who needs Netflix when we got the Harry and William show? So, what's next in this royal drama? Will Harry try to sneak into Kensington Palace to disguised as a gardener? Will he send William a heartfelt message via skywriting? Will he release a pop single called Brother? Can you spare a reconciliation? At this point, nothing would surprise me. But here's a radical thought. What if instead of constantly trying to force a reconciliation that clearly isn't happening, Harry actually focused on living his best life? What if he used his platform to spotlight real issues to make actual change in the world? What if he stopped trying to be the star of the royal drama and instead became a supporting character in the narrative of making the world a better place? I know, I know, it's a crazy concept. It's much easier to keep poking the royal bear and hoping for a reaction. But imagine the impact he could have if he channeled all this energy into something meaningful. Imagine if instead of trying to get William's attention, he was out there fighting for causes he believes in, without needing to name drop his royal connections every five minutes. But who am I kidding? That would require self-awareness, maturity, and a willingness to step out of the spotlight. And if there's one thing we've learned about Prince Harry, it's that he'd rather be the lead in a drama than a supporting character in a success story. So, my dear viewers, as we wrap up this royal roller coaster of a story, let's raise a toast to Prince Harry for providing us with endless entertainment and reminding us that no matter how bad our family drama is, at least it's not playing out on an international stage. To Prince William for mastering the art of the royal ignore. And to all of us for having the patience to put up with this never-ending circus. Because let's face it, folks, in a world that sometimes feels like it's falling apart at the seams, there's something oddly comforting about being able to lose ourselves in the trials and tribulations of two brothers who seem determined to keep their drama going for as long as possible. So until next time, my royal watchers, keep your popcorn ready and your tea heart. This is your friendly neighborhood royal critic signing off. Stay sassy, stay classy, and remember... In the Game of Thrones, you either win or you end up desperately trying to FaceTime your brother who's left you on red. Peace out.